just real quick. Um, as they're coming down, I'm going to ask you to stand back up just for the reading of God's word. Ooh. Exodus 14, 10 through 12 says, as Pharaoh approached the people of, as Pharaoh approached, excuse me, the people of Israel looked up and panicked when they saw the Egyptians overtaking them. They cried out to the Lord and they said to Moses, why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? Weren't there enough graves for us in Egypt? What have you done to us? Why did you make us leave Egypt? Didn't we tell you this would happen while we were still in Egypt? We said, leave us alone. Let us be slaves to the Egyptians. It's better to be a slave in Egypt than a corpse in the wilderness. Huh? Stay with me. Hebrews 11, 6. And it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. Look, I really need you guys to stay with me this morning, all right? I'd like to use for a subject, the devil is a lie. Huh? The devil is a lie, right? Now, now, let, let, let me help y'all. Some of you say, oh, he's supposed to be a liar, a liar. He's a liar. No, he's a lie, right? Everything about him is a lie, right? Scripture says this, when he lies, it is consistent with his character, for he is a liar and the father of what? Lies. The devil is a liar. Let's pray. God, thank you. Speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you guys would just give me a few minutes, man, I need you to track with me. Just, just real quick, track with me. Uh, just real quick. Um, the Lord put something in my heart. Um, the last couple of weeks, and uh, and I was watching. I was watching um, this guy talk, and and this guy is a is a psychologist. And I listened to him talk and explain things about you know the brain and the way we think and and, and all this stuff. And and he made a profound statement. Uh, and I want to share my version of it, of the statement that he made. I want to share it with you just real quick. It says, we believe the lie about our past instead of living in faith for our future. I'm going to sit down on this one. Because I'm trying not to rush this one, right? We believe the lie about our past instead of living in faith for the future. See, that's what I heard him say. And it shook me and it stopped me in my track. I'm like, whoa, what in the world? And he began to explain some more things. And, and you know, I won't go into a whole lot of details. And, uh, but, you know, I, I will tell you this and, you know, I... I don't claim to be a medical doctor or even a psychologist or anything, but, you know, and he, but, but, but he talks about, like, you know, our thought life, right? When we begin to think a certain way, what happens is there are neural pathways that are etched into our brain. Let me give you an example. When we leave here, Many of us will take the same route home that we always take, right? And a lot of times we take that and we, we just do it without even thinking about it, right? Because we're used to it.
We could miss everything that's going on around us because we're just so used to it. We could, you know, and, and we've made statements before. I can drive this road with my eyes closed. Right? Because they're, 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 I mean, I hope you don't do that, right? <laughs> but, but there is some truth in the fact that because we've made this decision over and over again, there's this neural pathway that is etched into my brain, into my mind that I just, I just do it. I do things. I get up in the morning and I, and I shower, right? And I just go through the routine without even thinking about it. There's things we do over and over and over and over, and over again that we do without thinking about it. And then I run across this and he says, we believe the lie about our past instead of living in faith for our future. Let me say this as I, before I go further. Um, many of us, hold on, let me, let me backtrack. The older I get, the older I realize the better I know myself, let me say that. Are y'all with me? The better I understand, hmm, that's why I've been doing that all this time. Oh, let me talk to you this morning. Right? Because of something that may have happened when I was a kid. Now at 47, I'm starting to realize, hold on, that's where that came from. Oh, y'all. Some of y'all younger people, you won't get it until you're 40, right? But, but the older I get, come on, people, y'all help me. Uh, those over 40, huh? I mean, some of y'all younger might get it. But, but the older I get, I realize, man, that back there is why I do this now. That back there affected me in such a great way that even now, 30 Plus years later, I'm still doing this. And a lot of times what happened back here was a lie. Or the result of it was a lie. And therefore, I'm not able to live out what I need to live out here because I'm still thinking Let me give you some examples. Some of us had some things that happened to us or that was said to us in our, in our past that was an outright lie. And we knew it was a lie, but somewhere along the way, we believed the lie. Come on, I'm, 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 going, I'm going personal with y'all. I can remember years ago that somebody called me ugly. I knew that was a lie. Come on, I knew that was a lie. If anything was a lie. But watch this. But if somebody else called it, then you start to think, huh, Maybe I ain't as cute as I thought I was. <laughs> and what happens is we live in the lie of low, low self-esteem. We live in the lie that, of, that we're not good enough. That nobody will ever want me. Come on, right? Let's get personal, right? Because this person, this one person said I was ugly. Right? Now, can I tell y'all on the flip side? This one person may have, said, may have said you're ugly, but all you need is one person to say that you're cute. So what I'm saying to you, we've, we've dealt with some things, and some of you are thinking, running through your mind, you've dealt with some things in your past that was an outright lie, but somewhere along the way, you begin to, be, uh, you begin to believe the lie. 
I remember one of my football coaches, he's, he's passed on now, he used to always say, an insult is only an insult only if you perceive it to be true. Y'all think on that one for a little bit. An insult is only really an insult only if you believe it to be true. So we've been in situations where something was said, something was done that was an outright lie, but somewhere along the way, we believed the truth. And because we believe that, huh, it happened back then, it's affecting us now. Second thing. You've had some things that happened to you that was possibly a lie. That maybe, maybe not, it really wasn't what you thought it was. Let me give you a personal example. Huh? I have told you guys my story about my fear of dogs. Right? You know where it happened? Way back here. And, and, and even when I, and, and I thought about this this past week or so, even when I tell the story, I always tell the story that I was attacked by a dog, but I really don't know. He probably was playing with me, right? Which he probably was when I think about it. But when I was younger, you know, I'm like, I don't know. It's po possibly, possibly not, right? And so I perceive it as, as an attack, which it probably was not an attack at all. I'm being transparent with you guys. Huh? But somewhere along the way, I, I believe that here, and here I stand 47 years old. If I see a big dog coming, I'm running. Oh, let me talk to somebody, right? That, because it is burned into my neural pathways, that is my response. You got two responses, fight or, fight or flight. And I've been running for 47 years. <laughs> Come on, right? So my natural response is to what? Is to run. Right? Listen, tell, let, me, let me help y'all. Never tell a person who is afraid of dogs, don't run. <laughs> no, I'm going to run. That's what I do. Some of us have seen or experienced some things in our lives that possibly a lie. Y'all with me? Y'all with me? Y'all tracking with me on this? Huh? Possibly a lie. You know, and when, even when you look back on it now, you think, you know what? That really wasn't what I thought it was. But now still has an impact on me. Let me tell y'all something else. Working out is hard for me now. I'm going to tell y'all why. And I've only shared this with maybe one or two people. Because when I was younger, man, that was what I was about, right? Like, I, like you know, I, I pride myself on it, right? Like, man, you know, it was an addiction for me at one time. Working out for, for me is hard right now. Y'all want to know why? Because I have three guys that I played football with at Virginia Tech. Three of them had a heart attack in the gym. And two of them are dead. I'm just being transparent with you guys today. And because that happened here, let, me, let me talk to you. Let me go even deeper. One of the guys, guess how old he was when he died? 47. You know how old I am? And I never realized it, but it has impacted me greatly because I'm thinking, man, I stay at the house, need some chips. Come on, somebody, right? Huh? I'm just being transparent with you guys. 
But because that happened there, I mean, it, it, it has severely affected me now because, I, you know, anytime I go for a walk or even try to run, and if I get a little twinge, I'm like, oh, whoa, when my... <laughs> Just being honest with you guys. The devil is a lie, right? Just because it happened to them doesn't mean it's going to happen to me. Right? But what we do... We believe the lie of our past. And it keeps us from living out all that God has from us. Can anybody track with me? Huh? Now, let me, let me deal with one more. You've had somebody here, you've had a situation, and all of us have, where something definitely did happen. It wasn't an outright lie. It didn't, wasn't possibly a lie. It happened. But as a result, it produced a lie. What are you saying, Pastor? Without going into details, maybe somebody, you've been in a situation where something violent happened to you. And I don't want to dismiss that, not at all. And you had a situation where something violent happened. And as a result of that, right, it has made you feel guilt and shame. It has affected you in a way where you can't have proper friendships or even a, 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 a deep relationship with somebody because of something that happened. It was the truth. It happened. But in the other, on the other end, it produced a lie. Because watch this. The enemy wants us to live in guilt and shame. That is a trick of the enemy. He wants you to live in guilt and shame. That's why Jesus says, it says in Romans 8, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. He does not want you to live in guilt and shame. He wants you to live in absolute, total freedom. Amen? But what happens is this that happened back here has caused me to live out the lie. Come on, somebody. I need you to help me today, right? I need you guys to track what I'm saying, what God is saying to you today. No more. The devil is a lie. No more. Something has happened to you that has produced in you fear. And years later, you are still living in that fear. I know. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm preaching from the overflow of my heart. See, what happens is because we've been responding that way for so many years, it makes it hard to change. Come on, y'all. There, there been a time or two where I've tried to stand when I saw the dog coming. Right? Because people are saying, I ain't going to say what I was about to say. These people are saying, don't run, don't run. If he run, that's just going to make him chase you. And my legs are like, and then guess, guess what I do? Pew. Undefeated, y'all. But when it happens over and over again, what, it makes it hard to change. It's the way I've been doing it all my life. It's, it's burned into my mind. This is what I do. So I get it now when people say, that's just the way I am. I mean, I don't accept that, but I get it because you've been doing it the same way. Even if it's a lie. And what happens is when we live out that lie over and over again, there's absence of freedom in our lives. God wants us to be free. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am.
seeing somebody here today. Look, I'm, I'm preaching this to myself, too. God, I need y'all to understand that. I am preaching this to myself, right? And I'm hoping I'm going to remember this next time a dog is running my way, right? Who help me, Jesus, right? Huh? I'm preaching this to myself, right? But, huh? There, there's an absence of freedom, right? Huh? Because let me tell you, I'm, I, listen, I'm, I'm just spilling the beans on myself today, right? I need y'all to know your pastor because, see, if you invite me to your house, I got to know, do you got a dog? got a dog or a cat, will you lock him up? I'm just telling you, so if you invite me to your house, I may come, but I may ask you, do you have a dog? Because I need to know. And part of the reason I need to know so I can plan my escape. But as I think about it more, Living like that is tough because there's an absence of freedom, right? Right? And somebody, for you, it's not the dog, it's fear, right? It's, it's, it's unbelief, it's low self-esteem, whatever it is, and there's an absence of freedom. You're not, you're not able to live out all that God has for you because, man, you're living in the lie of the past, huh? Watch this. Let me go to Exodus real quick and I'm wrapping up, right? He says, watch this. So, so, so for those of you who don't know the story, let me tell you like you don't know. God sends this man named Moses to the children of Israel because they are in bondage in Egypt. Right? And they are slaves. They are slaves. Right? And, 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 and they, they, man, the, the oppression on them is heavy. It's heavy, right? And they're crying out to God, God, send us somebody to deliver us. Send us some. And guess what God does? He sends somebody to deliver them, right? And so when he sends Moses down to deliver them, they like, who are you? Come on, right? Y'all see? I'm like, who, I'm like, who are you? Right? And that's how we do, though. God answers our prayer, and we're like, Pff. like, what's that? I'm your deliverer. <laughs> so God sends Moses to deliver them. Okay, all these plagues happen, 10, ten plagues, and it, and it happens just as God said it would. He's like, this is going to happen, then they're going to let you go, and you're not going to go empty-handed, right? You're going to go with all their gold and stuff, right? Huh? They left there like this with stuff all in their shirt, like, <laughs> all right, let's go. So not only did God deliver them, he blessed them beyond their imagination, Okay? So, they get to the Red Sea, and they're like, uh-oh. And even Moses is like, uh-oh. And God says to Moses, Moses, why are you saying uh-oh? <laughs> right? What's in your hand? Stick out that rod, man, and pray, and watch what happens. He says, stand still. Oh, that's the PJV, right? He, he said, PJ version, okay. He says, stand still and see the salvation the Lord has prepared for you, right? And God, he, he creates, right? Huh? And, and so, and, but, but backtrack, as they're standing there at the edge of the Red Sea, Pharaoh and his men are coming. They're coming in the chariots, right? They're like, let's go, let's get them, right? And, and the children of Israel, they turn around and they see the dust clouds. And they're like, oh, and they turn to Moses, Moses, man, what's up? What are you doing? Why you bring us out here like this? Why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? Weren't there enough graves for us in Egypt? What have, what have you done to us? Why did you make us leave Egypt? Come on, hold on, hold on. You were crying out to God, deliver us. God delivers you, and then you say, why you make us leave? What? You know why? They believed the lie. Didn't we tell you this would happen? while we're still in Egypt, we said, leave us alone. Huh? Hold on. You prayed and you asked God. God sins. And then you say, and then he says, let us be slaves to the Egyptians. What? You asked for freedom. It is better to be a slave. What? It is better to, I mean, that don't even go together right there. We can stop the sins right there and be like, what in the world are you thinking? It is better to be a slave in Egypt than a, cor the a corpse in 
the wilderness. Look at their thinking. Their thinking here was more of a mental slavery. Oh, come on, somebody. I need you to be here. God had delivered them out of their oppression, the very thing they were praying for. And they get out there and God, and God tells them, man, we're going to a land that's flowing with silk and money. Milk and, I mean, milk and honey, right? Oh, oh yeah, come on. Y'all go get that later. Y'all go get that later. Huh? It's flowing with milk and honey. I mean, it's, it's great. I have a bet. I have better for you. I have a promise for you, right? But they still here in this mental, right? they're living the lie of the past. They get to the edge of their freedom and they're like, Moses, we, we should have stayed here. We were better off there. Like, what in the world are you thinking? But it was what they were used to. And they were believing the lie of the past. Oh, can I talk to somebody? Huh? Somebody, you have been in a, in a you've been trapped in a situation. And you believe it's okay. And God has so much more for you. God has a promise waiting for you. Huh? Come on. But God can't give you the promise if you won't let go of the past. Huh? Come here, young lady. Come here, young lady. I always like to talk to the young ladies, young men who are in a dating relationship. Hey, you, 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 you're in that relationship and it's no good for you. And you've left and you stood on the edge of the Red Sea and then you went back. You left, but you can't seem to let him go. You go back, right? And you left and y'all keep going back together. You, you don't know why? Huh? Because it's what you're used to. And then God cannot give you that until your heart lets go of this. Maybe for you it's not a relationship. Maybe it's something else. But God cannot give you this promise until you let go of that. As I close out, check this. You got to have faith for the future, right? He says, without faith is impossible to please God. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. Watch this. I believe it's this. As a believer, God rewards us if we operate in faith. Right? What's the reward, Pastor? Freedom. Huh? That's what I believe. That, 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 That the reward is absolute freedom in Christ. But I can't really have that freedom if I keep operating in the lie of the past. And the devil is very crafty. Come on, y'all. The devil is very crafty. He is very cunning. He is the father of lies. And the devil will have you to believe that it's okay for you to be in that state. It's okay for you to stay there. It's okay for you to take the abuse and all that. The devil will tell you it's okay because it's just what you're used to. It's a safe place for you. And he'll say it's okay. Can I tell you, there is absolute freedom in Christ Jesus. Right? Free from guilt. Free from shame. I think free from anxiety. I think free from depression. I think free from so many things that we wrestle with that happened to us back here. We got to live in the faith for our future. See, because God calls us child. He called us, we are his children. 
we are redeemed. We have been bought with a price. We, we've been adopted into the family. We have been chosen. We are set apart. We are a royal priesthood, right? A peculiar people, a chosen people. Huh? And so I don't have to live in the lie of the past. I can walk in the freedom of knowing Christ as my savior and walk in the freedom and faith for my future. I don't know who I'm talking to, but then again, I know who I'm talking to. Man, I think this is for everybody in this room. Everybody in this room. Because no matter, what, no matter who you are, you got something in your life that, man, you need to deal with today. Something that has been hindering you from being all that God wants you to be because you believe the lie. Don't believe the lie. The devil is a lie. Don't believe it. See, somebody God is calling you to do something and you believe in the lie about, about what happened in the past that, man, this failed in the past, so this is going to fail now. No! Thank you guys for allowing me to share my heart with you today. Man, I'm praying that you, man, that you would hold on to what God is saying to you and that you will live in that absolute freedom that comes with knowing Christ Jesus. Uh, we're going to pray and I'm, I'm not asking anybody to come up and uh, anything like that because I am believing God that this message was for everybody. I just want to pray over the whole room. Hmm? So if you just close your eyes, just right where you are, let's pray. Father, I thank you that your word is true. Thank you that your promises are true. Thank you that we don't have to live in the lie of the world. I pray that somebody is being set free right now. That somebody is, and man, listen, I have been believing this for so long and it's, it's an absolute lie and I am no longer going to live that out. I'm no longer going to walk in that. I pray God for freedom right now in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that they would know who the Son sets free is free indeed. We don't just, know, we just don't want to be free. We want to be free indeed, without a shadow of a doubt. Free to the point that we won't go back. Free to the point that we won't turn back and go back to Egypt, a place that is not good for us. That but we'd walk forward into the promise of all that you have for us. Thank you, God, for being good to us. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you, God, that we know we are your children. And you have so much for us. Thank you, God.